Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to talk about how to remove noises in Adobe Audition. On another tutorial I talked about removing noises that run throughout an entire clip like hiss, wind noise, fans, motors, uh, light fixtures, things like that. In this particular case I will bring that up again briefly but then talk about dealing with specific types of noises and how we work with those kinds of noises. So here's a clip that I made, just me talking and, uh, and then having some noises thrown in. So for example, here's a big hum. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And then here's some, just uh, some basic hissing, sort of staticky noise. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these, and this is static with little clicks in it, are life, liberty, and here's a vinyl record sound, the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, and we got some coughing, <coughs> deriving their, <coughs> lovely, and a cell phone from the consent of the government. So how do we get rid of those sounds? Well, uh, you can get rid of some. You can get rid of some of some of them. And others, you just got to sort of punt and just give up. So, the, But the uh, basic way you do it is by not working inside the waveform view. You work inside the spectral frequency display view. And that is this little button up here that will switch to that view up in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, or just simply grab this little handle down here. When you see those two sets or that set of parallel lines there, you can always drag that. That's a little handle you can drag. We'll drag it all the way up and deal just with the spectral frequency display. First of all, there's this hum. And you can see it. This bright yellow area means that that's loud. And that's the frequency that's loud, and the frequency is right down here in the bottom. If you look at the right-hand side under this frequency display, which goes from 0 to about 22,000 hertz, that uh, gives you a sense of the full range of human hearing for people of really good hearing. Down here in the bottom, which is basically almost off people's hearing range, there is this deep hum that's very loud. But it doesn't sound that loud because, again, it's right at the edge of human hearing. To really see exactly what frequency that is, because that's kind of important, what for the process we're going to use. You can zoom in on this display. To zoom in on this uh, particular uh, ruler here, this uh, frequency uh, readout, you can just do a marquee select. So I'm going to right click here to do that. I right click and then drag and make that marquee. Notice the little uh, magnifying glass icon saying that we're going to zoom. And we'll zoom in here from 0 to about 500 cycles per second. And now you can see that the frequency range of this hum and it kind of stops right about there. And if you go across, it looks like it stops right around 190, 190 cycles per second, which is important to know because we're going to work on that, that specific range later. Well, there's a couple of ways to get rid of that hum. I'll uh, start by using what's called a marquee selection tool. Now, there are tools inside Adobe Audition that work very much like tools inside Photoshop. We have a marquee selection tool here, which will select a rectangular area, and a lasso, which will select uh, any kind of area you want to draw. So we'll start with the marquee, or we'll use the marquee because it uh, is rectangular, as is this sound here. So I'll click on the marquee selection tool to change that. And I'll drag a marquee around this yellow area where it's really loud. When I do that, you probably won't even be able to see there's a marquee there because it's sort of soft white over that dark, or that bright yellow. But I'll drag it up here so you get a chance. There's the marquee. I'm going to drag it down just to that spot there. Now what we can do is we can then just reduce the volume. When you create that marquee, here's your little volume control knob. It'll affect only whatever is selected. So I'll reduce the volume a, a little bit at first. Let's say we'll bring it down, let's say, 20 dB. And there you can see it's not so bright yellow anymore. We'll bring it down even more. Now it's getting to be almost gone. So we basically just reduce the volume in that selected area. Let me just uh, play that back, and you'll see that the uh, hum is gone. But that also affects the voice a bit. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So you can see how the bass in my voice comes back in the area after the hum ended. So that's one way to deal with hum. You can just simply reduce the volume to a certain degree. You, I could keep on reducing it more and more and more until it's just gone, or just do it partially like that. I'm going to undo that a couple of times. There we go. Go back to the beginning. Another way to deal with that is by using an effect. So let's go to the effects. First of all, let me change the view back here to regular. And the way you change it back to regular view is right click again say zoom reset, which you can see has a keyboard shortcut, but that's kind of an elaborate keyboard shortcut. So let's go zoom reset. Now we're back to normal. Apply an effect here. Now there are two ways to apply an effect to a clip. You can do it inside the effects rack or go up here to the menu for effects, effects, and find some effect here and apply it that way. If you apply it via the menu, it'll apply it directly to the clip 
and then when you're done it'll change the uh, data in that clip. It won't change it on your hard drive until you click save go file save but it will change it within the clip. If you use the effect rack, effects rack that sort of uh, applies the effect electronically without actually putting it into the file so when you play it back later you'll hear the effect of the effect but without it changing the, uh, uh, the data of this clip uh, as it is now sort of residing temporarily inside your program. The advantage of that is that you can apply a bunch of effects in the effects rack and test them out and change them or delete them or turn them on or off and to see how they all work, which is great. The problem with that, though, is that you can't apply uh, an effect an effects rack to just part of the clip unless you specify the area of the clip and then click the word apply down here just for that particular effect. So there are, there are pluses and minuses, but let me just show you how that works. The effect we want to work with is called the Fast Fourier Transform, but let's just take one step before there to see other effects that work with specific frequency ranges. So I'll go over here and open up this effects area and look under Filter and EQ. I have something called Graphic Equalizers and Parametric Equalizers. I'll just take the Graphic Equalizer. I'll let you control volume in specific frequency ranges from uh, minus 31, 31 to 63, 63 to 125. You can see that works. It doubles for each one, sort of the way uh, frequencies double along here. So I could take, let's say, these frequencies right down to zero, and that'll actually get rid of a lot of the hum. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created. So it does get rid of some of the hum. That's because between 125 and 250, there's still uh, some space there that was included in the hum. So I'm, I'll knock the 250 down all the way as well. Try that. We hold these truths to be self Boy, it makes the voice really tinny because it took out the bottom, oh, let's say 300 or so, 300 plus cycles per second. Uh, and uh, makes it sound pretty tinny. That's kind of the little zone where my voice does start kicking in. So it's not a very exacting way to deal with uh, uh, reducing volume in a particular frequency range. So let's close that. It'll still be here in the effects rack, but we're going to swap it out for something else by clicking this disclosure triangle and go to Filter and EQ and go to FFT Filter, the Fast Fourier Transform. This lets you specifically select certain frequencies to remove. If you just check some of these uh, presets, for example, we'll get rid of a uh, 60 hertz loop. They're very specific, very narrow ranges of uh, frequencies if you want to select them and drop them down to zero, for example. We'll go back to the default. In this case, we want to take about 190, which is right about there, and bring everything before that, everything less than that, to zero. So I, at that starting point, I pick a point next to it, grab that, and pull that all the way down. If I slide it to the left, I've got this kind of gradual change, but here it's like abrupt. So, so from about 190 on down, it'll be absolutely quiet right there, and I take this side down all the way. And now everything in the, one, in the zero to 190 range will be silent. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So that'll be silent. It'll be that way all the way across the entire clip. Now if I select a range of the clip, let's say right where the hum is, right about from here to here using the I-beam tool. I just went up there and selected the time selection tool, also called the I-beam tool, and drag to select just that area. Then right now I could apply this effect to just that area. Here it sits inside the effects rack, affecting the entire clip. But until I click on the word apply, it won't actually change the clip. Later, if I've got, let's say, six effects sitting here and click apply, it'll affect the entire clip. So right now, I want to take care of business by clicking on the word apply to affect just that selected area. And now you can see that that hum is gone. Now the yellow is turned to dark purple, meaning it's silent. We hold these truths to be self- And now I'll click away here so you can see what it sounds like when I go from the affected area to the non-affected area. Self-evident that all men are created equal. So you can see that the voice does get a little bassier when it gets there. I could do the same thing to music if I were to switch over to the music side of things. There's that hum again. I could do the same fast Fourier transform on that one. But we'll just stick with the voice right now. And we'll work on the voice side of things for the rest of this uh, discussion. Notice there's a little asterisk now next to the name of the file saying, by the way, you've changed this file. So at some point you might want to save it, and uh, usually you want to save it with a slightly different name so that you don't mess up the original file. Or more importantly, or the, probably the better workflow is to not work with the original file ever. Just make a copy and work only with copies here inside Audition. Let's look at this next thing here. It's just this hiss. That they 
And we've dealt with this hiss before where you get a noise print like that. Uh, you go to effects, noise reduction, restoration, capture noise print, and then go back again and go like so and do noise reduction process using the noise, noise print we just got. And then you go across and you select the entire range of that particular clip, test it out. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That they are decide how much you want to remove and then click apply for that area. And I've talked about clicking uh, apply for the entire clip by selecting the entire file. In this case, we would just do it for that particular area. So that's the standard way to go about uh, dealing with the noise issues here. I'll go ahead and click apply so you can see how that looks. If you, if you look at my other tutorial, you'll know that it'll clean up a lot of that sort of purple fuzz. There you go. Got rid of most of that stuff and cleaned it up. That they are endowed by their creator with certain... Un but what I want to do in these next ones here is I want to deal with these little bits of static. Listen to this. Yep. That among these are life, liberty, just a couple little pieces of t -t 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 -t, little pieces of static. Well, when you're dealing with static like that, it's best to get rid of the background noise first and then work on the static. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you get a better look at the uh, frequency display. And you can see, if I'll drag this guy a little bit to the right there, you can see those little bits of static. You can see problems here inside the spectral frequency display. That's one of its great uh, attributes. So let's first of all go, th go through the process of getting rid of the background noise. And I'll show you a faster way to do it than the way I have been showing you. And that is simply to apply the effect, the uh, noise reduction effect. Now it's going to take the old noise print, which we don't want to use in this case. So just make a selection now with the I-beam, with the time selection tool. Get a new noise print. Bingo. Drag this guy out for the length of the thing that you want to fix. Test it out. Make sure the little loop button is selected so it'll loop a loop a loop as you play it. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can decide that among these are life, liberty, how much you want to reduce, uh, you know, how much of the noise you want to get out, and then how many decibels of the noise do you want to get out. Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That among these are life, liberty, and again, when you do this, it's uh, sometimes by reducing the noise, you end up kind of affecting it, the, the whole overall sound quality. But this is a quick and easy way of getting rid of that hiss. So we'll click Apply to, for the whole range here. Click Apply, and now we're done. And now we've got these little pieces of static to deal with. Let's listen to that. That among these are life, liberty. And they're pretty subtle, but you can see them. So I want to get rid of the static. And there's a tool that we can use that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. We'll try it out and see how it works in this particular case. There are two approaches that you can take. You go to Effects, Noise Reduction, and then this thing called Automatic Click Remover. So here you see this. So you've got Threshold and Complexity. What the heck does that mean? Well, the lower settings are, are more sensitive. And the higher complexity uh, uses more processing power to try to deal with it. And if you forget what those darn things mean, you know, which one do you use? I mean, typically the default value is 30 here for threshold and about, I think, 16 or so for complexity. If you do forget what those guys are, you can always click on this little I button here to say, you know, tell me more. And here's that particular thing, automatic click remover, and it says that threshold determines sensitivity to noise, and complexity indicates the complexity of noise. Higher settings, more processing. Lower settings, more clicks. Okay, so let's just uh, try it out. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it, it's taken care of those guys pretty well. I mean, I'll just I'll just take the default settings here. And that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of that among these. Okay, so I'll I'll accept that. That did a pretty good job. And let's see if they go away. They get just kind of fuzzy. Those little sharp lines now are a little fuzzier. They're not just not completely gone, but that among these are life, liberty. And the pursuit of you really have to listen carefully to hear any remnants of those little bits of little bits of static. So the click remover does a pretty good job uh, dealing with those little bits of static. Let me undo all that work and try a different process. This thing's called diag there's a thing called diagnostics. If I go to effects diagnostics, there's a thing called D clicker process. And the same thing is true if I go to this diagnostics tab. Then there'll be a D clicker as well as other guys you just saw moments ago in the effects menu item. So I'll go to D clicker, and then what it says is scan it. So scan this guy. I'll scan it, and it finds things that it considers to be clicks that it wants to deal with. And then you say repair all. And let's see, it didn't get rid of them completely. Let's just see how that sounds, though. That among these are life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of pretty good. I still hear some little clips back there. So you could scan it again and try to repair all again. But that's that's the basic, the other way that you could do to deal with little uh, clicking sounds like that. Let's move on down to this next one, which is the vinyl record noise. This is different. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among... And I'll, I'll say the process will be the same for this one, uh, where you uh, remove the, the basic, basic background noise first and then go try to get rid of those little pops uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the cracks, the scratches on the record. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take care of the uh, noise off uh, screen here, and I'll come back in a second. All right, I've taken care of uh, some of the noise. This is a difficult one because the noise kind of wavers a bit, so it's hard to get rid of all of it. That to secure these rights, Governments are instituted. But I haven't tried to deal with those clicks. So now we'll try the same thing we did before. We'll go back to effects, noise reduction, automatic click remover, and we'll try it out. That to secure these rights, government... And boy, it's not working at all, right? Try that again. ...are instituted among... That to secure these... So you'll see that the automatic click remover doesn't work when the clicks are big. Let's go back and scan it. Repair all. Try it again. That to secure nada. So you can see that the D clicker or the automatic click remover, neither one really deals with these sort of thicker clicks. So how do you deal with it then? You gotta do it manually. So let me show you how that works. So I'll expand the view a bit here. And you can sort of see the clicks. Let me just take a look here. That to right there is a click right there. That to secure these right another click here. So we'll deal with this click here. Right. That to secure right there is a little click. And when you're dealing with clicks, you just have to identify them or select them with the marquee tool. Here's the marquee tool. I'm going to select this little guy right there. I'll expand the view a little bit more so I have a better look at it. I'll just take the marquee tool and select that whole click. If I just play it, because I've got the loop on, it's playing that little click. And then there's this wonderful tool, this amazing tool inside Audition called Auto Heal. Auto Heal will take an audio like this and we'll erase it essentially and then do a cross fade with the stuff on each side of it to try to replace it with something other than what was there. So you go to favorites, not effects, but favorites and there's auto heal. I click that and that thing is now gone. If I click this guy, it no longer has that click in the middle of it. It took care of the click and just now re replaced it with stuff that's on both sides. So now let's play that. That to see that click is gone, which is amazing. So it's a great way to deal with these little specific narrow instances that you can identify. You can see one, like right there is one. You can take this guy, do the same thing, go auto heal, go to favorites, auto heal, and that little click will not be Here gone. Here are these rights. So this little guy right here is probably another one, but nevertheless, that's the way to deal with it. But the problem with auto heal, and I'm not sure why Adobe does this, is that when you apply auto heal, the volume level drops about 3 dB. So I'm going to use it on a cough and show you a way to remedy that. Let's, let's zoom out a little bit. Governments. Are we'll go to this next thing here. Slide over to the cough. It's a big cough and a small cough. <coughs> Deriving their just There's a small cough there. So we'll deal with the small cough. So let me zoom in a bit on that little area here. You can see this big cough here. <coughs> Deri two of them. Plam, plam. And then this other guy here. Right there just I want to get rid of the smaller cough. And notice this little line right through there. That's an electronic hum that I inserted there at about 16,000 hertz, which only people with really good hearing will hear. You can deal with that by using the marquee selection tool, for example, and uh, uh, picking that out, or using the uh, FFT filter, and again, selecting about 16,000, just narrowly removing it. That's how we could remove it that way as well. But let me just stick here with the second cough. There, I'm going to select it with the marquee tool can see the cough basically right about there. Yep. And what I want to do is remove that using auto heal. Now when I do auto heal under favorites, auto heal, it removes it and then reduces the volume. Having been just I really took care of my voice too. So let me let me not have it be quite so much when I reduce that. Let me take up a little bit and maybe just remove a little bit less of it this time. Favorites, auto heal. <laughs> Try again. Deriving there just so the cough is more arriving there just gone. There's a little bit of cough left here, so I'll do another auto heal. Arriving there just. 
So it does get rid of it. it, does give you kind of a thump still, but it's not as obvious. But the thing is, the, the volume drops whenever you apply Auto Heal. I'm going to go Control Z a couple of times, I'll bring it back. Since the volume drops, you need to first do Auto Heal, and then really to make it work right, you need to raise it 3 dB or so. And then it'll be a smoother, just it won't be so obvious that it was there. So I'll do it one more time. Favorites, Auto Heal. Raise it 3 dB, and this is kind of the process. Every time you use Auto Heal, you should then raise it up 3 dB. I think they're just as long as the thing is selected. So there's a way to avoid having to do this thing where you you know apply Auto Heal, then raise the volume by 3 dB, and that is to uh, record a favorite. So there's a little option down at the bottom of the favorites that says Start Recording Favorite. So I'll click on Start Recording Favorite, and now it gives you a message saying, You're recording a favorite now, which is fine, so I'll say OK. So now the first thing we do while it's recording is go auto heal. Done. Now raise 3 dB. I'll just click here and type in 3. And now I'm done. I will click under favorites. I'll say stop recording favorite. And that created a new favorite. We'll call it uh, um, good auto heal. Okay. Good auto heal. Because I've already got my own right there that I've done before. So there's good auto heal now. So in the future, if I want to do, I'll undo the. Uh, this one here, and I'll apply the good auto heal, favorite good auto heal, and that will then do the auto heal and raise it 3 dB all at one time. And to, since I do auto heal a lot when I'm working with, let's say, concert recordings and taking you know little noises out like coughs like this, I've come up with a keyboard shortcut that I use uh, to do this faster instead of having to go to the menu command this, good auto heal, instead of doing that. Driving there just I uh, use a keyboard shortcut, and the keyboard shortcut you apply by going over to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and there's the uh, Favorites. So what I want to do is apply some kind of keyboard shortcut. This I've already got my keyboard shortcut for my Auto Hills Control forward slash, but we'll go up to here and let's say we pick out, let's say uh, we got this, this shortcut thing ready to go. If I press the shortcut, I go Control, let's say Control backslash. Maybe that'll work. If I click Assign, it'll tell me whether one's already been assigned or not. Yep, this one's it's already in use. You want to override it? No, we don't want to override it. So let's try a different one. So I'll select it again. Go down here, get this guy ready by clicking there. So let's say, let's try Control uh, uh, Left, or Right Bracket. Control Right Bracket. How's that? Will that be all right? Assign that one. Bingo. So now Control Right Bracket is my new shortcut for the good auto heal. And so I'd try now to try that out on this big cough, which again, the old big cough is going to be tough to get rid of, but I'll do control left right bracket, excuse me, control right bracket, and that is new, the new shortcut that not only does the auto heal, but also raises the dB, <laughs> deriving the, and got rid of some of the cough, but boy, you can't get rid of all of it. But that's the basic process to uh, deal with coughing by using that uh, auto heal. Finally, here's this uh, horrible cell phone. And the consent of the go. How do we get rid of that? If we do auto heal for the whole darn thing, notice that the you can see the frequency is going all the way down here and all the way up to here with actually some overtones up here. Wow, what a mess. Let's just try auto heal on that one though. So go control left or right bracket. Give my game left and right confused. It's gone. Let's see what it sounds like. Or is from the consent of the governor. So it takes a lot of my voice out of there as well. So let's just narrow the view down a little bit. The marquee select like just those the brightest areas. Just the loudest offending things. Auto heal that. Control the right brackets. It's from the consent of the government. Still have that horrible. And that's the problem with a cell phone ring like this. Boy, oh boy, it'll be tough to get rid of it all. You could try to select like that and do one thing at a time. But when you do the auto heal, it's taking what's on the left and what's on the right and crossfading it. What's on the right is more beeping sounds. So as you can see, some things are not so easy to get rid of. I could try to select these guys down here, but you know it's going to take care of my voice too. So one thing you can do is reduce the volume on it a little bit, but again, it'll reduce the volume Or it's from voice. the consent of the governor. So it's tricky to get rid of some things. Some things are impossible to get rid of, and some things when you get rid of them, they leave uh, obvious places in the middle of it. But I uh, hope you can see there are various approaches to dealing with uh, specific types of noises in Adobe Audition.